Yo, what it do? It's your boy, Sidney Tarver, man, from the NFL, to corporate America, the Amazon Logistics. I own my own company, People First Logistics Company, man. How I escape the rat race, the matrix, all these terms you hear people, the nine to five, whatever term you want to call fitting into the society where you work 30 years at a job that you hate with people you don't like away from your family 40 hours a week. I'm going to tell you how I escape that lifestyle. First, man, what a DSP, an Amazon DSP, that's a delivery service provider for those who don't know. But yeah, let me talk to you. I'm going to tell you my life story for a little bit, man. Hey, I'm Sydney Tarver, man. Chattanooga, Tennessee, man. Raised by some good parents. My mom and dad were like, my, mom, my dad was a teacher and a football coach. My mom was a social worker. I don't got no sad story. My parents took good care of me. They was divorced. So I lived in two different households, but everything I needed, they took care of. I didn't get everything I wanted, but everything I needed to survive and be a good kid, they made sure I had it. No questions asked. So salute my parents. Hey. Yeah, start your own DSP, man. You ever wonder how these Amazon packages get to your doorstep? DSP program. And with my DSP mastery program, I'll show you how to hire over 100 drivers and to get over 50 vans, just like me. How to automate everything, drive, deliver safe. DSP mastery program. Get with me right now. Hit the link down below. If you want to tire your nine to five, escape the rat race, or if you're another willing entrepreneur who already got the money and you're looking for another viable business option, let's get it. DSP mastery, coming from nothing, out the box, how do these get to your house? DSP all day, every day. Let's get it. When you're a kid, you don't really know like it's bad because kids can just play like they don't really, and yeah, they might have some bad clothes or shoes, but is a kid gonna play? If you can play with other kids, it's not, you're not gonna know the other kids until like you get a little older and they start teasing you for your clothes and all that. I was going to these private schools. I had private school friends, but then I had friends from my daddy's school. Like it was just, we was kids. He was coaching football. So I was always at football practice with my dad being around men, like doing what boys do, fighting, wrestling, cussing, all that stuff. Know what I'm saying? So I had rich friends and I had not rich friends, regular friends, you know what I'm saying? So, plus I was playing sports, so I was active in the community, knew a lot of people just through sports and playing soccer, baseball, football. If you come from out of state borders too, they cost $64,000 a year to go to my house. At the time, I was just playing sports. So I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking like, I knew kids was rich. They had Escalades and new Tahoes and $50,000, $100,000 cars when we was Range Rovers, Mercedes, G-Wagons. They had all that when I was in high school. I had regular Toyota Grand Marquis, the regular car, you know what I'm saying? So I knew that was different, but I was playing football. Like I, I wasn't really caring about them. I, you can flex on me by being rich because I'm gonna knock you out. Like we play football, like, you know what I'm saying? So started getting good at football, got a college scholarship to Tennessee State, got a college scholarship, went four years. I had, matter of fact, let me mind you, my GPA in high school was like 2.7. I don't know. I, I could do work, but I didn't really care. I just did enough to pass, like C's get degrees. Then I went to college with that same thing. I got the full ride football scholarship. My college GPA was a 2.7 overall. I graduated still with a business degree. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I go. But uh, I was fortunate enough to play, be good at football at Tennessee State University. We had a lot of people go to the pros. Anthony Levine, Dominique Rogers, Camardi, Ed Two. It's a lot of list of names. Just look up the college and look at all the people who went pro. Um, so. I was able to go pro. I got undrafted free agent. I went to Cleveland Browns um, after that. Then I got cut by them and then got picked up with the Jacksonville Jaguars later on that season and finished out the season with the Jags. They cut me like four or five days before Christmas. I'll never forget, that was funny. But um, after that, I went back home. I might've worked in like a like sports camp or a daycare or something for a little bit. And I was like, man, once I seen I wasn't going back to the league, like my agent kept flim flamming. It will never forget, it was me and my dog, TB, Tony Brown. We was working out at D1. He had just finished like his nine year career. And we was just working out, like seeing if we was gonna go back to the league or what we was gonna do. Both of us, like we looked at each other and we knew that moment, like we ain't going back, let's go get into life. So Tony went to go coach football and I went to Virginia, a guy named Terry Philpott, I'll never forget. He offered me like 5,000 to move to Virginia and start working in this warehouse. And that's what I was doing. I was working in this warehouse, Damco Distribution. 
up in Chesapeake, Virginia. And he was just showing me the ropes of business. This was my first real job. Like I had jobs in high school for like $7 and cutting grass and all that kind of stuff. In college, I ain't really had too many jobs. Like our coaches would find us little stuff to make some easy money with. But my first real job was in Damco Distribution. My business degree was in supply chain, business administration, supply chain logistics. So I went to work in his warehouse and Terry, he put me in the leadership development program. I'll for never forget. He was showing me the ropes, showing me different programs, having me working night shifts, showing me how to work Walmart, showing me what a forklift, showing me what a different account was in warehousing, how to load a trailer, how to ship a trailer, how to do the customer service, how to do the bill of lading, how to do all the functions in warehouse. And I was living in Virginia by the port where the cargo ships, the big ships you see, um, bringing over containers from across the seas. Whenever you order from China, Alibaba, they bring your stuff over on a cargo ship. Big containers. We was loading them, sending them to the port, taking them from the port, unloading them, distributing them through all throughout America. So I was seeing the real supply chain from the front end to the back end, you understand me? Really learning customer service, transportation, learning all aspects. So I did that for like two years, I think. Terry was sending me, I got so good, Terry was sending me on trips to California. Anytime another company, a part of the company needed help in another state, Terry, I was the guy to go send because Terry knew I was gonna go grind it out, help the team, blood, sweat, and tears, put that effort in. So that's kind of how I made my bone. After like a year or two, Terry seen I was getting it in. It was another company, the same company needed help in Baytown, Texas. So they promoted me down there. I went there for like a year, Baytown, but I moved to Houston, but I drove to Baytown. It's like 30 minutes from Houston. So I lived in like downtown Houston, but I drove back and forth every day, night shift. It was rough down there. It was like a Thanksgiving break, some kind of break. I never came back because I had got a job from Amazon had hired me. Amazon was just now launching their delivery uh, business with the blue Amazon van. So we was like the top in the between the 20 stations. Amazon was brand new to delivering their own packages, but they had just now hired and started working to open one up in Amazon, I mean in Houston. And it was in Humble, right? Humble, Texas, right? Like another right by the airport in Houston, if you know Houston. So I was out there grinding. We was working out of a sort center. So they they shut it down because they wanted to like build a standalone building and they did that. But when they shut us down, they said we had to go find a new job or relocate. Not think like thinking differently. Like if they didn't promote me, like corporate America, they make you jump through hoops to promote. It's really political. Like if the boss like you, you gonna get promoted. If they don't, if you ain't really going for all that, like I'm a cocky individual. Like I do my job, but like I'm not gonna be doing any and everything. Like I'm not no suck up brown. No, I'm not kissing ass to make nobody happy. I don't care what it is. You feel me? So. I didn't get that, so I ended up moving to Las Vegas to work for him. I took a position 